again, one more time, welcome to our webinar for the Association of North America Higher Education International. I am Professor Jihan Chobanolu. I am the president of ANEI, also a McKibben and chair professor uh, and the director of M3 Center at the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee. Uh, we are going to have this wonderful webinar, Transformative Leadership by Fazal Siddiqui, who is right now here with us. I would like to welcome him. Uh, Fazal, welcome. Thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Before I give the floor to Fazal, I would like to just go over, as we always do in our webinars, just to give you a quick information about our wonderful organization. It is truly global, Association of North America Higher Education International. We believe that the problems of the future will be solved by global citizens who understand, appreciate, and respect other cultures. The main mission of ANE is actually to uh, make sure that we promote and encourage this global culture. At our member institutions, uh, which is more than 5,000 uh, people from 114 countries, and also uh, globalized student and faculty successes, enhance global initiatives among member institutions and deepen global engagement. The, uh, uh, the website of the organization is anahei.org, A-N-A-H-E-I.org. All of you can go there. If you're not a member already, we, well, uh, we, we encourage you to be a member. It's free of charge to be a member. Very quickly, give you some quick uh, information about the programs that ANE does. We have, uh, the main mission is to connect academicians globally. We have a membership database. Once you become a member, you can actually find the other members in different countries when you visit, if you're looking for a visiting assistant, uh, uh, professorship, etc. whatever the need might be that you can actually email these people directly, the members from the, uh, it's free again and no solicitation. So we are not a commercial institution. It's a not-for-profit organization. Therefore, we do not allow vendors in there. ANE organizes several conferences. Just to give you a few examples, this one is called Glosser, and it happened this year in April 17, 20 April. We welcomed almost 200 educators from around the world. Uh, it was done at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. This particular conference called Global Conference on Business Economics. We had this conference in June in Sarasota, actually on at my institution here. We again hosted about 200 people here. And very soon, as a matter of fact, right after this webinar, our team is leaving Sarasota to go to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, uh, to do the global search conference to actually uh, conduct and do the global search conference and we'll again uh, welcome about 200 scholars from all around the world in this wonderful business hospitality and tourism research conference you all are welcome to attend uh, our conferences in the future we are already planning several locations for uh, Anahi uh, conferences we also have a visiting scholar program we match scholars to universities and also you can do the same thing with through the membership search. We have um, two journals. There are two open access journals, which means that it doesn't cost any money to submit an article. Once it's accepted, it doesn't cost any money uh, to publish it. And for the readers, again, it doesn't cost any money to read it. Uh, journal of Global Business Insights is one of them. Here's the website, scholarcommons.usf.edu slash globe. And the other one is the Journal of Global Education and Research, the website, again, usfcommons.usf.edu, J-G-E-R. So these are the two journals. And then we have webinars, just like uh, uh, with Mr. Fazal uh, Siddiqui, we are doing it now. We had previous webinars as we are recording this one. We did also them. Uh, please feel free to go to our website to watch them free of charge at any time. We had uh, Marco Sarstead about PLS. It was a uh, re research methods um, webinar. Uh, Dr. Anil Mahija uh, from the Ohio State Dean of Ohio State Business School Middle Market. Uh, uh, Dr. Yubo Chen from Tsinghua University in 
in China, Beijing, did the digital transformation of Chinese markets. Uh, J- Dr. Jason Shaw did the reports from Global Field. And actually, Dr. Shaw is going to be our keynote speaker in the Global Search Conference in Vietnam soon also, too. Dr. Ravidar from Yale University, he did uh, a wonderful uh, lecture also earlier last year. So again, feel free to go to this website, ana.org webinars, and watch all of them uh, as recorded. The website, one more time, is anahey.org, and we invite all of you to become a member. Please encourage your students, your colleagues, also to be a member, too. Okay, now I would like to introduce our uh, webinar speaker today, uh, Mr. Fazal Siddiqui, and he is an author, executive coach, consultant, trainer, and innovation facilitator known for developing executives and leaders. He is highly accomplished as an HR executive with 30 plus years, corporate experience in leadership development, talent management, executive team team alignment, and integrating business strategy with strategic human capital initiatives. He has three master's degree, and he has worked in a variety of industries, including manufacturing, retail, oil and gas, and financial sector. Working in senior executive positions in the corporate world, Fazl was, in, Fazl was instrumental in the setting the Center for Leadership Development for the Kuwait oil sector and the graduate development program to nurture young leaders at the Gulf Bank of Kuwait, programs that live on successfully to date. Through these endeavors, he has assisted many leaders and their teams in understanding their strengths, collaborate effectively and drive organizational and personal success. Uh, Fazl's passion lies in helping people find the leader in them and harnessing the leader to improve their professional and personal lives. He understands how leaders evolve and know how to help them create corporate cultures that bring out uh, the leadership qualities in teams. He has a proven track record of helping leaders increase their level of effectiveness and circle of influence both professionally and personally. Fazal is a leader maker who strives to bring out the best in people, inspire them, and spark innovative ideas through coaching, mentoring, and facilitation. Through his comprehensive writings and programs, he works with groups and individuals, both seasoned professionals and those just starting on their leadership journey. On a personal note, I met uh, with Fazal a couple of months ago in Bangkok, in Agba Conference, Academy uh, Academy for Global uh, Business Advancement uh, Organizations Conference. And he also delivered a keynote speech that I was very impressed that I wanted to invite him to our webinar series. I am so happy that uh, Fazal, you accepted and share your wonderful experiences, ideas uh, with us. Without further ado, I welcome you to our webinar. But uh, while I'm doing that, I just would like to, okay, I see that participants already came and looks like that everybody is hearing us. Also for the attendees, if you have any um, any uh, questions, you can go to questions and answers, or you can go into um, uh, also the comment section. You can write your questions to us. And as you type them, then after uh, Fazl finishes his presentation, I'm going to bring your questions to him. And we are recording this session. And without further ado, I would like to turn table to Mr. Fazl Siddiqui. Thank you, Jihan. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, that was a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Are leaders born or made? Okay, we want to do a poll, right? Yeah, yeah, you're going to do a poll. If you were to share your screen, if you'd like, yes. we can do it that way. And I see that there is, oh, they're asking if we will, uh, uh, if you will share the slide deck. Yes. Uh, yes, 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 he will. Yes. We right. will turn them into PDF and put on our website once that's done. So it's a great 
uh, answer. So we will say yes here. This is a great example. The person who sent us this question, wonderful. And uh, Dr. Fazel is going to uh, want to do a quick poll. So I'm going to start the poll. Leaders, do you believe that? Okay, let's see if people will be able to see. You should see a question in your screen right now. Do you believe that leaders are born or leaders are made? Are we look good on Facebook also too? Okay, perfect. Uh, I just checked uh, with our assistant Luana here to make sure everything. And people are voting, I see that's wonderful. Please click on what you think if the leaders are born or leaders are made. And in a few seconds, I'm going to stop the polling uh, and I will share the results with you. So right now, 72% of the audience said that leaders are made and 28% said leaders are born. Let's see if I can share the results. Can Hopefully you can see the results uh, there. But 26% yes. said leaders are born, 74% said leaders are made. Fazel. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. That's very encouraging. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, let's let's that's that's really good. That's um, what we need to do now is. Um, so let me ask you another question on on the same related question. Are you at a point in your life or career when you could really use the leadership skills buried within you? So can we bring those leadership sure. skills that you have bring them out? You know. And if your answer is yes, then this is the webinar that you need want to be attending. And again, uh, Fazl, I have uh, show the, the, the question. Okay, the, yeah. the question. So the attendees should be seeing it right now as we are doing it. You know, some people said no. That's that's okay, I guess, right? That's okay. That's, that's okay. Fine. That's okay. We can still we can ignite that passion. Exactly. Exactly. So so far, right now, the the polling is going almost finished. Ninety five percent said yes. Five percent said no. Right. So I'm going to stop the... Those five persons who have said no, please write to me and we can connect and I will show you how you can bring that out. Wonderful. And you, you will share your contact information at the end. At the end, I will. So again, 95 said yes, 5% said no. So this ends our polling. Okay, Fazl, we are back yeah. to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. So... This webinar will help you develop a burning desire and courage to lead. It will give you the optimism and motivation to succeed, the vision to define and take responsibility for your dreams, the excellence to become a sought after world-class performer, and the authenticity and integrity to build and inspire trust in others. And these are the five pillars that you need to become a leader. Each one of us has a leader within us. Now you can, there are four domains in your life. Your professional domain, your personal domain, your familial domain, and your sublimate domain. Now you can choose to be a leader in any one of these four domains, or you can choose to be a leader in all four domains. There is a leader in you. You are a leader to your child. You know, according to, my, to me, the definition of leadership is having that heart conversation with your five-year-old son when he demands a toy that you can't afford. What kind of an impact are you going to leave on the child? That is leadership. Lead, let every action of yours define you. No matter who you are, what you're doing, where you're in your life, you're a parent, you're a son, you're a daughter, you're a child, you're a grandfather, whoever you are, you're an executive, you're a leader. Let every action of yours define you. That is leading. Let me tell you a story first. This is a place called Junalagudam district in India. You know, it's uh, in the southern part of India. This place was flooded, has cyclones every year. And this place was in 2016, in June of 2016, this place was flooded. There are 18 villages in this 
which were marooned, completely underwater. The, and I had spent my early childhood years somewhere close to this place. So I thought it was a moral obligation to go and do some work for relief work for them. So I went there. I did some work. The, the, the mood was very somber. Everything was destroyed. The crops were destroyed. People were very unhappy. So we thought we will try and light up the, the environment a bit. And we did a poll. We asked people who Bill Gates was. And out of a survey of 1,500 people, only 6% knew who Bill Gates was. 9%, more than the, the, the people who knew Bill Gates, 9% knew what Microsoft was, but they did not know who Bill Gates was. There was one more interesting thing that happened. This place, this, the, the water is regulated by a dam called Nagarjuna Sagar Dam. It has got gates, the floodgates. Now, this, these gates control the flow of water. Whenever the, the water rises, they'll have to open the gates and the water goes. So people said, you know, we know that there is a dam. We know there, is, there are gates there, but we don't know really which one is called Bill. 33% of them knew that there were gates, but they did not know who, which gate was called Bill when we asked them who Bill Gates was. So, but another thing was, we asked them who was in charge of the flood relief operations there in the village, the government official. 67% knew who he was, and they named him. And his name was Ram Chadovaram KVN Chakradhara Bhavu this difficult a name, but they knew him by his name. So that brings us to a question, who is a leader? I would like to take you down the history of leadership and how it has been evolved and how people have talked about and how the, the debate goes on. The Chinese wisdom of leadership said that leader is best when people, Lao Tzu said that leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim is fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Sun Tzu also said something similar, treat your men as you would your own beloved sons, and they will follow into the deepest valley. Aristotle talked about the great man theory, where he said leaders are born and not made. Nicola Machiavelli's prince said that better, leaders better be feared than to be loved. A total contrast. Marcus Cicero de Gloria said, the higher we are placed, the more humble we should walk. Robert Greenfield's servant leadership, enriching the lives of leadership individuals is what, how the servant leader needs to evolve. So I have read about leaders and leadership for, you know, for the last 10 years I've been working on this. There are people like Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, Margaret Thatcher, I would like to, in the history of development of leadership, Bill George came up with, in, in the year 2013, about authentic leadership. He called, and this became a fad. Howard came up with executive edu education programs in this. So during the same time, Jim Cousins and Barry Postners came up with the exemplary leadership model. But in 2015, a scholar from um, Stanford University, a professor from Stanford University, wrote a book called Leadership BS and said that the last thing a leader needs to be at crucial moments is authentic. So the debate goes on. Despite all this research, all this talk, all this work that has gone on leadership, leadership still remains a very unresolved debate. It's not improved. People disagree and do not think highly of their leaders. Trust in leaders is at an abysmal low. Leaders who defy every rule in the book shockingly become successful. Egotistic leaders land up in leadership positions per chance. So who is a true leader? A true leader is some, someone who makes a positive impact somebody who is passionate about being of service to others. That's how I evolved the concept of the coveted leader, the title of my book. Coveted leader, this 
is somebody, covet comes from a Latin word, cupiditas, meaning passionate desire, eagerness, and ambition. Somebody who's sought after. A coveted leader is somebody who makes a positive impact and makes others feel bigger and better than who they think they are. These are not millionaires or running million dollar companies. These are ordinary people with ordinary dreams who make theirs and the lives of those around them extraordinarily fulfilling. They let every action of theirs define them. The concept of lead can help you find nurture and develop your inborn leadership talent. So the person who said he is not at, the, at a crossroad, but he's trying to find that leader, I'm going to help you with this. Learn, but you need to first lead, learn to lead self first. The quest for leadership, therefore, is an inner quest to discover who you are and what you care about. You must believe, strongly believe, that you can make a positive impact. Your words and actions can inspire hope in others. What you do counts. You, if you don't believe this, you won't even try. So first thing is that you need to believe in yourself. Believe that you can make a positive impact. Believe that you can inspire hope. Believe that what you do comes. Covet stands for courage, optimism, vision, excellence, and trust. I'd like to briefly define what I mean by these five pillars. Courage is the ability to select between two rights and act on it with conviction or to differentiate and say it so. Optimism is the belief that if something has to happen, it will happen. If it doesn't happen, something better will happen. Vision, the ability to foresee the unseen, the ability to, to spot the iceberg before your Titanic hits it. Excellence, the ability to know and do what you're good at and be the best at what you do. And trust, the ability to make others see the sorrow behind the smile, the love behind the anger, and the reason behind the silence. So why, why is this important for us? We live in what is called a VUCA world. We, nobody really knows what's going to happen next. There are challenges, there's disruption all over. So, and there is change coming every minute. We need to mind, um, we have a mindset that leads to behaviors and behaviors produce results. So make change happen in your favor. The core of our response to external change is going to be your behavior, how you, do you respond to change. Changing behavior to respond well to external change is the key to successful leadership. Change, as Robin Sharma says, is hard at first, messy in the middle, and gorgeous at the end. So what gets in the way when you want to become a leader, when you want to perform like a leader, to have a sustained and consistent contribution as a leader? When you learn to, to get knowledge, experience, and skills, that is happening at a very physiological level. But if you want to behave like a leader and show up like a leader in, in, in the world, it's how you behave and how you show up that matters. Behaviors are specific actions by leader in a context. These are how a leader shows up in every domain. And how you behave depends on two things and how you think about yourself, and how you feel about yourself. Thinking depends on ego. It's a relative response, self-esteem, self-importance, self-belief, and feeling is rooted in emotions. A relatively brief conscious experience characterized by intense mental activity and physical display. So what is important is to manage ego and uh, tame ego and manage emotions. Let's talk about taming egos. You know, 
in the when the Greeks uh, were, went to war, when the general came back after a victory, they used to be paraded in a very royal chariot and, and royal horses driven in the streets of Greece. But they would always be uh, um, a whisperer behind the city, standing right behind the general, and he would hold a book on the head of the general and keep whispering in the general's ears, Fisot Mythos, you are mortal. So you need to have a tamed ego. You can't let victory or success get into your head. We all fall in ego traps that becomes a hurdle for to become a leader or to become successful. Ego trap number one being ignoring criticism and feedback you don't like. Ray Dalio said, if your objective is to be good, as good as you can, then you're going to want criticism. For that, you need to develop learning agility. Accept criticism, take feedback, build learning agility, build, be brutally honest with yourself, genuinely and intentionally respectful to feedback, comfortable with complexity, be self-driven, adapt, and be self-aware. Ego trap number two, know it all fallacy. Google plays a big role in this. If you don't know anything, you can Google it. And you, you think you know the answer, but, but you don't. Uh, I was once watched a, a summit, Vancouver summit, where Dalai Lama was the chief guest. And somebody asked him a question. And Dalai Lama, who we all know is the the root or seat of all wisdom. He leaned forward, was silent for, for a while, and then he said, I don't know. So if Dalai Lama can say, I don't know, we all can say, we don't know. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking about yourself less. So you need to embrace vulnerability. Know that you cannot know everything. Nobody can know everything. Embrace vulnerability because in your imperfection lies the beauty of being human. Reach or connect with others. Seek advice that gives you strength. And this vulnerability becomes the birthplace of growth. Ego trap number three, surrounding yourself with people who will not challenge you. Because that will, you will live on the same wavelength and they will not contribute to your growth. It's uninspired, unproductive environment. So, so practice prudence over power. Learn to be moral, learn to adopt moral authority. Avoid reproach, engage with adversaries, and inspire hope. Ego trap number four, living in your mythical story. You ignore the facts and tell a story to yourself, and you live in that story all the time. We make up stories that we want to believe around facts. Validate your story and set the behavioral tone. Adopt consistency, self-discipline, and adaptive intelligence. You need to regulate your behavior, have your behavior virtues-based, instill habits and rituals that make you a better person, and adopt practical wisdom. Ego trap number five, no one else matters. Becoming insensitive to people around you can mean missing out on vital information for personal growth. See good in people. So be, it will make you socially resilient. Embrace diversity, value humanity, and enhance, it will enhance your self-worth. Ego trap number six is the state of ego depletion. The other side, the other extreme of ego swings. For that, you need to be taking ownership of who you are, say your truth, and to be proud of who you are. Live in harmony with your inner, inner self, self-respect, and be in sync with your inner, inner core. Avoid approval, addiction. Be willing to pay the price. Be passionate about what you are and who you are, and show self-compassion. The Japanese art of mending 
broken objects with gold epoxy with the belief that when something has suffered damage and has history, it becomes more beautiful. Let's look at emotions. University of Glasgow, there are 30,000 emotions we go through as humans. But University of Glasgow came up with a report saying that there are only basically four basic human emotions. And these, out of which only one is positive and three are negative emotions. The only positive emotion is happiness or joy. We all seek happiness. But happiness does not depend on who you are and what we have. It depends on how we think and what we do for others. So cultivate happiness, focus on building your strengths instead of showing up your weaknesses. It, it has to be virtue-based in order to be long-lasting and sustain you. The first negative emotion is fear. Fear stems from uncertainty or non-acceptance of uncertainty. False evidence appearing real. The fear of failure, fear of unknown, fear of not knowing, fear of losing somebody. Manifestations of fear are envy, failure, rejection, shame, loss of loved ones. There is an antidote to fear. And the antidote to fear is gratitude. Gratitude is an attitude of appreciation for what you have. The minute you start to adopt this attitude of gratitude, you will overcome fear because it gives you the emotional courage, it gives you a sense of abundance, it helps you connect socially and gets you closer to the universe. The second negative emotion is anger. Anger stems from unmet expectations, non-acceptance of things beyond our control. If you don't accept some things that you, don't, you are not able to achieve, you, have, you set up your expectations and when you fall short of expectations, you get angry. Anger is, has roots in expectation gap. The antidote to anger, as you know, can show up as rage, scorn, irritation, reproach, etc. Antidote to anger is appreciation. Be appreciative of people around and acknowledge them for who they are. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate your capability. Appreciate people for their, for their capability, for the effort. The importance of appreciation, praise, and administration and saying thank you is grossly undervalued. Step out of your bubble. Empathy. Empathize with others. Pay attention to others' attention. Praise for effort, not the result. Show compassion and don't make it personal. Mother Teresa said, there is more hunger in this world for love and appreciation than for bread. And Mother Teresa, as you all know, fed millions of people. And finally, the last negative emotion is sorrow or sadness. And this stems from dissatisfaction with self, non-forgiveness of self. You can be sorrow, you can be sorrowful or sad about a number of things. The only way you can overcome sadness is through experiencing or showing generosity. When you think of generosity, we, narrow have, we usually have a narrow definition of giving money. But generosity is making others feel bigger and better than who they think they are by your small acts of kindness and compassion. When you ex when you ex Besides generosity, when you show kindness and compassion, you have a giver's glow and a helper's high. You will stay in peace with yourself. You will smile more often, give advice, be more energetic and active. Let go of your right to be right. Only then you will overcome sorrow. I haven't said anything new. You had this power the whole time. You just had to learn how to use it as Glenda, the good witch in Wizard of Oz said. The happiness trifecta is therefore gratitude, produces dopamine in your body, 
This is neuroscience. And appreciation releases oxytocin and generosity releases serotonin. So this is your happiness trifecta. So if you can tame ego, manage emotions, you can learn and lead yourself. You will be able to let every action of yours define you. Jan? Perfect. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Um, great. Thank you, uh, Fazal, for this very informative, great presentation. I would like to open the session now up for questions. Uh, as you have them, please type them here. And I would like to read the first question to you. And also, uh, we will check the Facebook. Uh, if you, the, the people who uh, watch this on Facebook, please feel free to type your questions. Uh, Fazal, the first question is this. Should the leaders be developed differently for different industries? You know, um, I guess the, the audience member here is referring, you know, you work in different industries, right? Uh, a variety of different industries. So um, the question here is asking, in your opinion, is there any differences based on the industry that you are developing these leaders or the people who are in this? Are they different or universal, regardless of the industry? I, I would say they are universal. There are certain basic things that leaders need to, lead, regardless of the industry, leaders lead people. And there are people in different in industries. They may be technically different, for which you need to have the technical growth. But, but when it comes to leadership, when it comes to leading people, they are all the same. Okay, wonderful. And another question here is that uh, one audience member asked, is age an important factor in training the leader? So again, I am assuming, uh, and then the person can write us a more, maybe like, for example, if, a, um, if you are more experienced uh, when you are uh, developing your leadership skills, is that better than when you're younger, I guess? Is there any, do, do you see any uh, differences in age as a factor in leaders? I don't believe that um, there is age, age could be a factor. You people can start learning leadership at very young age. You see, uh, you see children at schools, you know, becoming leaders. They are leaders to their own colleagues or their own age group people. So leadership is, can be developed at any age for any environment, for any industry, or for any uh, uh, setting. So it's, I don't think it's age uh, specific. Okay, we are having more questions. Uh, okay, one person asked how leadership works in underprivileged population or groups. I guess that's a good question, right? Yes. Uh, what, what, what would you say about that? Uh, how it works? Could you repeat the question? How leadership works in underprivileged population or groups? I think uh, what I understand from this question is that when you are developing these leadership skills in an unprivileged, like for example, somebody who's dealing with poverty, right, okay, or they are dealing with the basic Maslow's hierarchy, right? How you know? Obviously, right, in a, in a privileged nations, they right. have all the resources. Right. So in your opinion, I guess this person here, um, Nazir Ahmed Sanki, is asking about your opinion in that, in that uh, manner. No, I, I, would, I would say it becomes even more important for the underprivileged. Yes. It's, it's very important for people to develop the skills of leadership and lead the underprivileged to a, a better future, a better world. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I have another question here. Uh, at the same time, I'm checking the Facebook so I don't ignore the people there. Okay, do you think that leadership workshops um, should be offered from 
A university. A, a university? From A university, from the universities. Yeah. For, for, I guess versus from professional organizations. Um, you see, leadership is not, it's a journey, right? So um, universities can, definitely can offer, but uh, the thing is universities have other roles cut out for them, bigger roles of, of developing students and teaching students the subject matter. So universities can collaborate with professional organizations and we can come up with, because leadership, as I said, it's not, you cannot have a leadership workshop in isolation. It is a journey and there is a post workshop work and there is a pre workshop work. So, so it's, it's a continuum. And it has to be done um, uh, in, a, in, uh, uh, in a series of workshops. And uh, we, we need to have uh, um, continu continuous development of leadership. Okay, okay, perfect. Another question here is that you mentioned trust in leaders. Yes. And the, cap in the capitalism and trust is looks like they're conflicting with each other because sometimes this um, let me see I'm paraphrasing the question because it's long so I guess the, the the audience member is asking that in a capitalist economy where people often need to lie or the leaders right um, but that that honesty is an integral part of developing trust uh, for the leaders so how do they balance this versus, you know, the, in other words, the, the interest of the company that they are uh, serving versus the trust that they need to develop among the workers and, of course, the other stakeholders? Uh, you understand? Yes, I do understand, and I, I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with, with, with that. Trust is very important regardless of capitalism or uh, uh, socialism of trust without trust leaders will not be able to be once a leader loses the people that's where the problem starts so lead, leaders the first thing leaders need to do is to build trust with people around them okay okay that's wonderful i am checking another question here one person asked about the impact of culture in leadership training. For example, China versus the U.S. Are they the same? You know, uh, Fazl, you, you know it very well. I mean, you, you travel the world. Right. In China, the, 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 the view that people see as a leader is very different than the view, for example, in the U.S. Right. What are the modifications as the developer of leaders that needs to be done? That's a very good question, actually. It's a very good question. Um, they, you see, at, at a basic level, we want the leader to be doing good for people. That's the base, base level. But the cultural culture def definitely has a very big role to play. And uh, the, the type of leaders that we see in, in the West and the type of leaders that we see in, the, in, in China or in India would be different because in, 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 in India and in China, you, it's very easy for leaders to become like gods. You know, people start treating leaders as gods. And that's out of the cultural uh, nuances and the cultural respect for, for, for leaders. Um, yes, it has to be different. It has to be you know, the leadership development training has to take culture into consideration a lot. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Fazl, I just would like to ask you a question uh, myself. Yes. And, and, oh, we just had one more new question. Let me read this, then I will ask mine. Uh, somebody said, I guess it's more a comment, and maybe you can comment on this comment. He says that uh, I used model lead with four steps. Localize, enhance, activate, and demonstrate used in spiral settings. For example, do something, then add on. 
it right. worked well in undeveloped, underdeveloped, and underprivileged areas. However, I still have difficulty in generalizing results. That's the same person who asked that previous question, uh, write this comment. Right. Any, yeah. Anything that you want to add no, to that? That's, 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 a, that's a very good way of, of, uh, of making this uh, lead, uh, abbreviation lead. Um, and if he's worked uh, um, uh, in different settings, generalization is the fact that, you know, like my definition of lead, let every action of yours define you. Now, that, that could be a real generalization. You know, but, but regardless of the culture, regardless of the place, or the country where you're where you working, or the, or the industry that you're working, if you are conscious of making sure that everything that you do defines you and leaves an impact, you're conscious of the fact that what you do Make, makes a difference in people's lives. You cannot be oblivious of your actions on, on people around you. So if you have this basic belief and the basic realization, then lead becomes very important. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, also, thank you to, to, to all attendees who are asking these questions. I, like I said, I would like to ask my question, and it just happened to me recently. I just welcome a group of Chinese students to USA, uh, just as a matter of fact, last week. And these students are wonderful students, as you talk to them and you see that they are very good, great students. However, they lack, lack uh, confidence. They lack confidence. Um, and I, you know, we were talking about being leader, okay? That, that, that was a discussion. How do you be successful? How do you stand out? And they seem to, you know, when you were talking about culture earlier, that they seem to be a little bit uh, lack of confidence. And, uh, and, and for them to go out and show any leadership traits is m very difficult. And just like those kind of students, and ANE is an organization where we welcome students also too. What would be your advice? You know, you have I, uh, outlined very nice steps to be a good leader. But what are the things that they uh, overcome this lack of confidence and they show themselves, they uh, gain more confidence and become good leaders? What, what are some advices from your personal experiences and professional experiences? Right, right. That's a very good question, Jayan. That's a very good question. You see, now my first pillar is courage. And courage is not roaring all the time. It could be a very, that small voice which says, I will try again tomorrow. And so if people can accept their vulnerability of saying that I am, there is beauty in, in imperfection. My growth lies in accepting and embracing vulnerability. I am not confident today. I embrace that. I accept that. And I will, work on that to become more confident. So saying your truth with passion, you're taking ownership of yourself. And why do people shy? Why are people shy and why people do not show confidence and leadership is because they do not take leadership, the ownership of who they are. They need to, to accept that, yes, I have not had the, life is all about experiences and expression. People do not get the, the, the experience or they do not get the opportunity to express themselves. And that's why that shyness comes in. So once you accept who you are and say, okay, this is an opportunity to, for me to experience something where I'm given an opportunity to show my confidence and I'm able to express myself, I'm being given a platform to express myself, then I need to accept that and take it as, as, a, as a growth, as growth for me. So that's where uh, courage, you know, they need to build courage in themselves. It's not going to happen uh, overnight. They need to be patient for this. Did I, did I answer your question? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Very, very good. Thank you. We had one more, we have a few more minutes. 
let's uh, take this last question. One of the audience members asked, do you feel there is a difference in leaders between men and women? I am a very strong supporter of women's liberation. I strongly support, I've all my life been uh, working with women and I don't think there is a difference in, uh, in the, the leadership. Uh, I strongly, strongly believe that they are all equal. And women can be as good a leader as a man or a man could be as bad a leader as a woman. So you say there is no difference, right? There is no difference. There is no difference. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I think that concludes all of our questions, Fazal. Thank you so much for your wonderful insights. I would like to give you a chance to any conclusion remarks before we end the webinar. I just wanted to show my um, the viewers uh, a copy of my book. Which I have a signed copy from you. I have a signed copy. Yes. So and much. anybody who's, uh, who's interested in reading can find it on, um, on Amazon, can buy on Amazon, or uh, they can write to me uh, or visit my website. You will find a lot of material from the, from the book. Right. Do you, do you want to show your website and the uh, contact information, yeah. share your screen one more time? I will. So in case somebody did not take it before. Yes. Is it visible? Uh, you need to share the screen first. It didn't come yet. It didn't come yet. Okay. Click on share screen. And uh, somebody actually asked for your email address, your contact information. So this is going yes. to be good. As soon as you bring the slide back, please. Yes, I will. Here you go. Yes, perfect. So, and do you want to? Okay, perfect. Here's the, here's the website, thecovetedleader.com. And Fazl at thecovetedleader.com is feel free to contact uh, Mr. Siddiqui directly through this uh, website and also the email address as well too. Wonderful. Thank you again. Uh, anything else you want to add before we say goodbye to our uh, viewers? I, oh, the only thing I would like to add, Jehan, you're doing a wonderful job bringing the, the world together, the cultural diversity together. Your good luck to you. And it was a pleasure being with you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure being with you. And uh, there was, uh, can we have access to slides? So people are asking, but yes, we will do it. I will work with you, put it on the website. Right. And also in a couple of days, the, this particular webinar will be available for those of you who couldn't uh, come to the live meeting today that you'll be able to watch it. Uh, Fazal, thank you also for your nice words. I'm very proud of the organization. It become a truly global organization, a connector. Uh, and then we believe that we are also uh, developing leaders of the future in, in right. the context of students and faculty members and all academic uh, audience. Absolutely. And also thank you to all of you who have attended this uh, webinar. We would like to um, thank you for coming, asking questions uh, and all the uh, other uh, comments that you have done. Uh, we will, um, oops. I'm just going to end up the, we would like to uh, welcome you to our future uh, webinars in the future. Please go and become a member at anahe.org, A-N-A-H-E-I.org, and have a wonderful day, night, evening, uh, depending on where you are. Thank you again, uh, Fazl, for your insightful presentation. Thank you Bye -bye. very much. Thank you. Good night.